Hello, everybody. Welcome to another edition of the Business of OTT. My name is Chris Linden. I'm the Chief Operating Officer here at Active Video. Today, we'll be talking about what's happening in North America and with North American operators. And I'm pleased to welcome Chris Tripp, our SVP of Global Sales and Customer Engagement. Welcome, Chris. Thanks, Chris. Good to be here. So globally, as you know, we've seen a significant rise in streaming OTT, video services, new apps coming out every day. What are the implications for the operators here in North America? It's a great question, Chris, and I think it's a question that a lot of folks have been thinking about over the course of the last several years. Uh, OTT applications have been around for a while. There's nothing new there. Um, but I think what has really changed over the last 12 to 18 months is the, the pace in which programmers are moving their content to OTT applications. It's clear that the programmers want to control the user experience and, and how content is presented to, to the consumers. And so as these changes happen, operators will need to start to look at pivoting and accelerating their plans to deliver OTT applications to their customer base in order to both remain competitive and to flatten the curve of cord cutting. But I think if they can figure this out, um, they'll have a unique opportunity of providing both a simple and stable solution to their customers for consuming OTT applications and live linear TV at the same time. So what specifically do you think these operators need to do in 2021 from a roadmap perspective? What do they need to develop? What decisions do they need to make? Yeah, the core decision is really how are they going to onboard these applications? They, these applications operate at the pace of the internet and they're authored at the pace of the internet. Uh, they're updated really frequently, 50, 60 times a year. And so operators are going to need to try to figure out how do they accomplish and support an ecosystem that evolves at the pace of the internet. There's been a lot of discussion around how to do that. And there's, there's lots of solutions out there. Uh, many of the common solutions are either on-box solutions doing native ports or finding an on-box native solution that uh, the applications reside within uh, the set-top box. And then there's the cloud-based solutions. But I think what's really important for operators to look at is how many of the top tier applications are available uh, and easily deployable and updatable in these solutions. And so operators will have to look at how to deliver applications long term uh, to their subscriber base and across their footprint of devices in the field. And how does AVOD or ad supported VOD fit into this play? You've talked about uh, the big SVOD properties. Uh, we see those all being deployed uh, globally, but AVOD is obviously coming on strong. According to a recent Nielsen study, 50% growth year over year. What's your thinking here? Yeah, so I think right now where the cable operators are sitting is in the hierarchy of needs. And so if you look at the demographics of cable subscribers, the majority of the cable subscribers are above 30, 36 years old. And, and so SVOD is critically important um, to deliver to those that subscriber community. However, the subscriber community that's most interested in AVOD is in the 18 to 30, 36 year old uh, uh, arena. And so as cable operators want to continue to broaden their subscriber base and to flatten the curve of cord cutting, AVOD will become critically important and how operators integrate AVOD into their user ecosystem, into their content ecosystem, will also be critically important. So well, finally, where do you see operators focusing long-term with respect to pay TVs? Is the pay TV uh, as we know it today dead? No, I don't think so at all. I don't think pay TV is dead at all. You know, there is still a large uh, group of folks that that watch live TV every day. I'm one of them. Um, and, I, and I think there's a lot of us out there. Um, but I think as operators think about remaining con competitive in the marketplace against other OTT and streaming devices, they have to figure out a way to merge the live linear customer base that they support today and the next generation of viewers together and offer a seamless solution uh, that merges both, both ecosystems of customers. I think OTT applications and, and big data and uh, offers an interesting opportunity for them. Um, but I think the first step in, in making that opportunity a reality is figuring out how to take the OTT applications into their existing set-top box community 
and de deploy it broadly so that they now have both ecosystems in play and they can merge the conversations together. They can mer merge the ecosystems together. And I think as we look at 2021, 2022 and beyond, um, merging the two ecosystems through federated search and recommendations um, is really important to the customer base. And it it's also very important to the, to the operators. Great. Well, thanks a lot, Chris. I appreciate all the useful information. Absolutely. Thank you. And uh, everybody, thanks for tuning in for another edition of the Business of OTT. I'm Chris Linden, and I look forward to seeing you soon.